All right, we are going to talk about Earth's atmosphere and the energy transfers that exist within Earth's atmosphere. So first, the sun. Here comes the sun. The sun produces all heat and light through a process called nuclear fusion. So basically, it crashes atoms together until they combine, and when they combine, they release a ton of energy. And this energy is in wavelengths, which we will talk about in a second. So we rely on heat and light for survival on Earth, but why? How does it work? Radiation. So the sun's light and heat that reaches us is called radiation. Radiation moves through electromagnetic waves and travels well in space. So basically radiation is these waves that reach us and when they reach us they can either be in the form of visible light, infrared radiation, or ultraviolet radiation. So visible light, infrared radiation, ultraviolet. So basically what we can see, the colors that we see around us, is the visible light. Those are, it's a very small amount of all the waves or radiation that exists out there. So if you look right here, this is the scale of all of the waves that exist. We have gamma rays, we have x-rays, we have ultraviolet rays, there's one of them. Then we have our visible light, which is just this little tiny section right here, and that contains all the colors of visible light that we can see in this little section. Then we have infrared light, then we have microwaves, then we have uh, long wave radio, short wave radio, or excuse me, short wave, television, FM, AM, and it basically just tells us how big the wave is. Okay, so gamma rays have very small waves, and long ray waves have very long, big waves. And our visible light has waves like this, okay, somewhere in the middle. So visible light, uh, this is the majority of the sunlight in the form of a mixture of all the colors you can see in the rainbow. Um, and those are all different wavelengths of light. Infrared and ultraviolet. So infrared radiation is a form of energy that wavelengths, uh, in which wavelengths are longer than visible light and is not visible, but it can be felt as heat. So infrared is more like heat, like you can feel it. Um, ultraviolet radiation has short wavelengths and can break chemical bonds. Now we can't see this either, okay? Uh, but this is the reason why um, we wear sunscreen, okay, is the UV light. Um, and it has short wavelengths and basically it can go in and destroy your cells. That's why it causes cancer. Um, all right, radiant energy. So basically what I just said, radiation, that's a type of energy. It's called radiant energy. So it moves through our atmosphere. If you remember, we have all the different layers of the atmosphere. So it starts up at the thermosphere, then moves into the mesosphere, and then into the stratosphere, and then into the troposphere. And basically two things can happen to that radiant energy as it moves towards the Earth. Is It can be absorbed taken in by the Earth's atmosphere or surface, or it can be reflected, um, shot right back out into space. So basically, here's the sun. We're going to get 15% that's going to be absorbed by the atmosphere, mainly the ozone layer, 50% directly or indirectly absorbed by the surface of the Earth. Then we're going to have about 4% that's going to be reflected from the Earth's surface and shot right back out into space. Um, and then we're going to have 25% that's just reflected because of the atmosphere. It hits clouds, whatever the case may be, and it can't get in. And then we're going to have 6 reflected by the atmosphere itself. So the greenhouse effect. So you guys have been watching, hopefully, uh, the great global warming swindle and um, the um, inconvenient truth. But the greenhouse effect is essentially as the sunlight enters the atmosphere, it is converted into infrared radiation or heat and is trapped, that infrared radiation is trapped by the gases in the air. Um, these are called greenhouse gases. It's a natural process and it has been used to regulate the temperature on Earth, which is one of the most important elements for weather and it allows us to keep water from freezing and the air temperature suitable to support life. So it's really important. The greenhouse effect is something we like, we want, because if it didn't happen, Earth would get freezing cold every time it was away from the sun and too hot every time it was faced towards the sun. So here's the greenhouse effect little diagram for you. So we have the sun. Uh, the solar radiation passes through the clear atmosphere. Most of the radiation is absorbed by the Earth's surface and it warms it. Some radiation is reflected by the Earth and the atmosphere and heads out into space. Um, we have some infrared radiation that is emitted emitted from the Earth's surface. Uh, that's basically once the radiation is absorbed, eventually it will be released and it can be sometimes trapped by the atmosphere. 
the greenhouse like a blanket and then some of it will be able to leave through the atmosphere um, and is re-emitted in all directions by greenhouse gas molecules. Uh, basically it, uh, this re-radiation of the heat allows all the different parts of the Earth's surface to stay warm even at night. Okay, heating Earth's atmosphere. So uh, there are three types of thermal energy transfer that work together to heat the troposphere. We have radiation. This is the transfer of energy by electromagnetic waves. We have conduction, the transfer of, transfer of thermal energy by direct contact. So conduction is direct contact. You can think of the D, conduction, direct contact of particles and matter, and occurs everywhere the atmosphere touches the Earth. And then we have convection. This is the transfer of thermal energy by the movement of particles within matter. So the heating of air currents, if you will. So conduction, what is it? It's the transfer of energy that occurs when molecules bump into one another by direct contact. Okay, molecules in warmer objects move faster than molecules in cooler objects. When objects are in contact, energy is transferred from the warmer object to the cooler objects. So essentially, in warmer objects, the molecules are moving really, really fast. And because of that, they're moving fast. And they can move to areas um, in the colder areas. It's going to move, and then it's going to start to heat them up. And so you will see a um, conduction or a transfer of heat from the warmer object to the cooler object. Um, conduction in weather. So Earth's surface conducts energy directly to the atmosphere. So as air moves over warm land or water, molecules in the air are heated by direct contact. Convection. Convection is the transfer of heat by the flow of materials. So convection circulates heat throughout the atmosphere. So if you notice here, when you put a pot on the stove to boil water, the heat mainly when the water starts to boil, it starts to boil right in the middle. And that means the water is going to be heated. And when warm things are heated, they rise. Then they are pushed off to the side by more heated water coming behind it. And then they cool down a little bit more and they sink. And then they're heated up again and they rise. And this happens both here. So these are both considered convection currents or convection circulations. Um, and this is the same way that the convection currents work here on Earth. So when air is warm, the molecules um, in it move apart and the air becomes less, um, decreasing the air pressure because fewer molecules are in the same space. So here we have the ground, okay? As the cool air sinks, remember cool air means, um, I guess you may not know this yet, but cool air means um, cold, so the molecules aren't moving very fast, and when the molecules aren't moving very fast, that means they're going to be closer together, which means there's going to be more high pressure. So cold air sinks, it is high pressure, you can think of high pressure as heavy, it sinks towards the ground, and then it is heated up by the ground, okay, and then as it heats up, it becomes less, less high pressured and more low pressured, and it's going to rise into the troposphere, and then it's going to cool, and then it's going to sink, and it's going to continue doing this, and that is called a convection current. Stability refers to whether circulating air motion or convection currents will be strong or weak. When they're stable conditions, um, that is weak circulating. So basically, if there's a stable condition, think of what this means for air masses meeting similar temperatures or vastly different temperatures. So basically, if two different temperatures meet, okay, you're going to get winds. And so when the winds meet, okay, you are going to get very weak circulating because the temperatures of them are not very strong. Unstable conditions are caused by strong moving air, which it usually produces like thunderstorms. And this is when you have two air masses that meet that have very different temperatures. Temperature inversion. So this occurs in the troposphere when the temperature increases as altitude increases. So sometimes that happens, and trapped pollution can be a result of this. So sometimes you have warm air, and most of the time it gets cooler, and so it just gets released up into the atmosphere. But sometimes you get a blanket of warm air that cuts off part of the um, troposphere. And when that happens, the smog or pollution is backed down, it's not released, and so you get smog that backs up around these cities. So this would be your temperature inversion, and this would be your normal conditions. All right, and that is all for energy transfer in Earth systems. Thank you.